scrappy peeps it's Del from Inky Quill and today I'm braving the pattern paper and I'm braving a lot of pattern papers so I'm doing a multiple photo uh, layout today with no mixed media but lots of pattern paper so the other night I managed to film six videos in one night I was on a power kick I hadn't filmed YouTube videos for about a week I'd been filming some patreon things and I just felt like filming and watching TV because when I film my Patreon videos I speak a lot of the time when I film them in real time uh, so I can't watch anything but I just felt like just sitting down and scrapping you know when you have those nights when you just feel like lazing around and making something well it turned into a scrap fest and I made six layouts five of them are all patterned paper which is crazy for me um, and I really really love them I they're probably six of my favorite most favorite layouts that I've made in the last few months and yeah so let's start with the first one so what I decided to do is I'm really trying to uh, use up my actual pattern paper stash instead of just using paper pads because I have I don't have too much pattern paper. It's mainly all paper that I received in kit clubs when I was getting the hip kit uh, and the Scraptastic kits as well because pattern paper here in Australia I find quite pricey. Uh, it can be, can be $3 a sheet depending on where you shop. So I typically don't buy actual pattern paper. I just buy the 12 by 12 paper pads that I can get a lot cheaper. I can get one of those for twenty thirty dollars so I I have this big stash and I think because I I think it's so expensive I don't use it I use the pattern paper pads that have doubles and it's thinner and it's one-sided uh, so I have all of this beautiful paper that's just going to, to waste pretty much the other week I created these little journals for my hundred day project if you don't follow me on Instagram I'm inky quill over there and I filmed a video for my second YouTube channel, Let's Get Inky, showing how I'm using these little uh, journals that I made out of scrapbook paper. And typical Adele laziness, I hadn't put away the boxes of pattern paper, even though it's like you know, two weeks later now. Well, when I'm recording this, it's two weeks later. And so they were still staring at me. So I thought, hmm, I'm gonna have a look and pick out a few favorites, not thinking about what photos I'm going to scrap, just pick out a few favorite pieces of paper and then see what happens. So I grabbed this beautiful floral, uh, it's the blue with the red flowers, and I ended up actually cutting out the center of it, which I know I don't need to, because I have so much paper, it's crazy. Not so much, but I have more paper than I can I could probably scrap Archie's first 18 years with the amount of paper that I have. Uh, and so, maybe not 18 years, at least his first five years. We all know I take a lot of photos. Uh, so I did actually take out the center of that floral one to keep for later, just because it was too pretty. So then I, I used that as the basis and I was flipping through my album because I pre-print my photos and have them in the plastic page protectors in my album. I am, it could be up by now, it probably won't be, but I do have a video coming on my printing process as well. Um, but I saw that floral and as I was flipping through the photos in my album, I saw these photos that were just waiting to be scrapped. And the red on Archie's little bib uh, just got my attention and as well as the blue of my friend's top and so I decided that this was the perfect layout. So then I decided because the floral was so busy I needed something kind of neutral. So I looked through my wood grains and I found a wood grain that had beige brown and turquoise and I thought that might be handy to match in with the background. So then I decided, I, because of the darkness of the wood grain, I needed something to, to brighten it up a little bit because these photos are quite, well, they're a bit dark because the horse is dark brown. And so I grabbed this white text paper. I don't know any of the brands, sorry, but they're old papers from a few years ago. So probably a bit tricky to track down. And so then, because I had so much crazy pattern paper happening, I didn't want to go with too many paper layers for my matting of my photos. So I just grabbed some uh, grid paper 
and from an exercise book that I was playing around with some doodles on, uh, some dictionary paper that was literally just sitting on my desk because I was too lazy to put it in the garbage bin. And I just popped them all together and made these little photo mats for my photos. Now, because I, I've i been actually, well, it's kind of a love-hate relationship with these multiple photo layouts, nine by 12 or eight and a half by 11, that have different sized photos. So you can see here, I've got a four by six photo, that's the big one. And then I've got this three by four photo, and then I've got a three by three square photo. And it's been, it's been a learning curve, I think, for me to experiment with photo uh, with layouts like this because usually when I did multiple photo layouts I would just choose a few photos of the same size but if you're looking for a bit of a challenge I highly recommend having a go at a smaller layout so not a 12 by 12 because that's a bit easier on, on when you've got that little bit of extra space but try a smaller layout um, with some different sized photos because it, it, it makes you think it, it kind of makes your brain work a bit harder so I'm just attaching those down with a doily and then I didn't need to do too much journaling here so this was um, my old kindergarten grade partner that I worked with when I was teaching uh, she has a little farm and so we I took Archie up and he had his first little go on a horsey of course we stood there next to him the whole time. Uh, he's not that good yet. Um, so we just put him on my friend's horse, whose name is Munchkin. We call him Munchie. And he's just this gorgeous little little horsey. Um, I think he's a pony. I don't know if he's a pony or a horse. She has explained to me the difference before, but I've forgotten. Uh, but he, he enjoyed just standing with the horse nice and still. But then when the horsey started moving, I think he was a little shocked that uh, he could ride, so he could sit on something that was moving. I think that kind of blew his mind a little bit, but he did really, he did really enjoy it. So now I'm actually delving into the DIY embellishments. So that's a tag that I made uh, with some of my, on a video chat with some of my Patreon girls. And then I also grabbed, I had on my desk some freshly made DIY embellishments that I'd just finished filming a Patreon video for the day before. And so I decided to grab those two little ones there. And I'm just sticking them down. And that's the thing I love about DIY embellishments is that they, they kind of, they help with your scrappy time. They, they help with making the most out of your available time because a lot of us are time poor or struggling to uh, fit in kind of a efficient creative time for ourselves we get so busy in thinking about oh but I, I, I can't sit down and craft because I should be doing this 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 I should be you know cooking this cleaning this spending time with this person whatnot but sometimes we just need a little bit of me time and the by having these embellishments already made it helps you actually finish a project in the, the maybe the short burst of time that you have available uh, and you don't have to feel guilty it's just, you can finish a whole thing so then I decided I needed a dark title I needed something uh, black to kind of pop out there and kind of go with the the darkness of the horses as well I was going to call it Hello Horsey, uh, but I decided that those thickers were a little too big. And then I'm, I'm really trying to use up my word thickers because people, do you have the same problem I have? You buy these word thickers because they're beautiful and they're so lovely and pretty to look at. You use a few of them and then you have those random words that you can't make work. There's a lot of girl. I have um, one of them has a couple of girls, so I need to hang out with some of my girlfriends, I think, and take some photos with them because it's just not going to work with Archie. Uh, and I really, really am trying to get those word thickers used up. And so what I've done is I've grabbed. There's a white set. I think that only now has maybe two words left on it. There's a black set that's pretty much 
complete except for maybe one or two words and then there's that, that half used um, kind of curly cursive one that I really love and so I've picked those three and they're right next to my desk so whenever I'm looking to create a title for a layout I try to always look at those first before I come up with something else because I'm just trying to get them used up so if you're having the same, same trouble I am with those darn word stickers just hanging around uh, put a couple not all of them just choose a couple and put them on your desk next to your desk under your desk on your head wherever you can put them and have a look through them whenever you're putting a title on your scrapbook pages not that every scrapbook page needs a title I just like the way that that looks so then I got one of my little uh, Patreon printables there. I did a whole page of little wreaths and I printed them really tiny so that I can use them like labels in my scrapbooking and my project life, adding a few little tiny hearts and stars and things. And the layout is complete. I really love this way this one looks. It's just the photos are bold. They're there in your face and it's just a really a pretty kind of layout. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. It would really mean a lot if you could give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or leave a comment. Uh, it really does help out my channel with the YouTube algorithms. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Bye.